Hi guys. A couple of people have asked if I can do a teardown or disassembly video as I like to call them on this crank and pull Rips Garage toy car. And I tend to agree with them because it's a bit noisy and if I accidentally don't get it back together again it'll be a lot quieter in this house. Anyway, we'll take it apart. Looks fairly standard. One, two, three, four screws. problem there. Need to get the wheels off to be able to lift that out. I think it'd be fair to say that became a little bit more destructive than most of my teardown videos. I actually had to cut the wheels off in the end so um, we won't be putting it back together. But we can at least now finish taking this apart. Obviously that's the flywheel. I got inside eventually, had to be a little bit more destructive than my usual teardown videos or disassembly videos. Disassembly usually means I'm going to assemble it again. I think teardown is a better description of this one because I actually had to tear it apart. I actually had to break the wheels to be able to get the gearbox out of the car. But we've done that now. Uh, this is obviously the crank that we normally pull back with teeth on it so we can equate that to a big gear, big circular gear that they've just cut a little quadrant out of. That makes contact with the smaller gear just there and that shaft of that gear is in a little slot instead of being... is that visible? Not sure. Yeah, slot just there so instead of being a normal axle hole it's a slot so it can actually slide around and that's because as you crank it back that pushes it up like that so as it turns As that gear turns the small gear, that is attached to the big gear behind it. That big gear makes contact with the small gear that's on the back of this one. If I just pull it out. So that's got a small gear on the back. That's attached to the bigger gear on this side. That bigger gear makes contact with that smaller gear just there. That's attached to the bigger gear there and that bigger gear is makes contact with that smaller gear there that's attached to the flywheel so we've got a multiplication or gearing up so a small movement at this end or a small rotation ends up in a fast rotation at this end then here we've got a movable gear that's pushed by that lever, which is that button on the top of the car. And that actually puts the axle in gear. It pushes against there, so that as this one turns, it 
turns the axle. So that's how it works. Short turns on that, or movements on that, are multiplied up so we get the flywheel spinning fast. And when we've got the flywheel spinning fast and we want to put it in gear, we push the button on top of the car, that pushes that gear in position and makes contact with the back axle. So that's it. I can't put the car back together, but I should be able to put this gearbox back together in case I want to use it on anything else. Just to show that lever or button operation, it's spring tensioned. As you pump it up, this is pushed back in position there. But then when you press the button, I have to hold it in place, it will slide forwards that way. And that's what pushes the that gear up against the axle. There we are, back together. I'll put a bit of tape on the back axle there so we can see it turning. So I can pump it up. Press the button. And away we go. There is a bit of a problem with it, I think. I don't think the gear that's on that axle grips very well anyway, because if I just hold it, the flywheel's still turning, but the axle stops. So, well, to be honest, that's probably not repairable. I could do something to make that gear wheel stick to the axle, but being as I've destroyed the wheels to get to it, <laughs> it's not going to be working again. I suppose I might be able to find some other wheels that would fit onto that axle, and we could make it work again. But I think this is just going to go in my junk box as something we could use for something else. <laughs>